I think they should do a price decrease. So I'd be looking at Rolex Sports pre-ceramic. I'll just sleep this one out. He's really a, a closet vintage watch guy. Full set and short production run. I don't think they've got the knowledge within the team to value a watch. People might, in their opinion, put Rolex above Omega. Like the Chagere, mate. How do I identify a good watch? Anywhere you go, all you do is look at wrists. Yeah. For me, alarm bells ringing. Best Rolex for 10K. Audios. Lights, yeah. camera, action. The dream team is back in town here at Watch Trader and Co. Jesmond Newcastle of Ontine. We're back for a QA. Let's get rolling with these questions. So we asked our followers on YouTube and Instagram to send us some questions about watches and the market. And we're gonna start off with a question from Rich Mitch. Now Rich Mitch asked us something last time, but this time he wants to know, okay. what are the best vintage watches at different price ranges? So we've got under 5K, 5 to 20K, and over 20K. I'll just sleep this one out. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, I think this one's gonna be handed over to me. I think Jack's gonna take the fifth. Good question, the question that I get asked all the time. But well, let me guess first, and then yeah. you can do yours. Yeah. Best vintage watch under 5K will be a vintage Tudor or a vintage Amiga. The best vintage watch under 20K, an older sub, which we had a one yesterday, or a sea dweller, and obviously over 20K. Well, it's going to be quite a bit over 20K, I believe is a Daytona. But I all have probably total different opinions. Well, but I that's agree my completely opinion. with your first one. You can still buy a entry level Rolex so date just oyster date but for under 5k if you could pick up a, a quality Amiga any specific model like can you get a you know me holy grail is a moon watch mm -hmm. you now struggle under five five years ago you would have gotten a moon watch for under 5k vintage Tudors because vintage Tudors are starting to surpass the price of vintage Rolexes Best only angle. because of the rarity. I think, I think of late since the market's changed with the newer Rolexes, Amigas, etc., the new watches. I think a lot more people are now looking at the vintage market. Our main appointment in Manchester yesterday was showing a client the double red writing C dweller. He's got a part X, which is why I've got two watches on. They're the part exchanges yeah. that came from yesterday. Safest place to come back yesterday was on my wrist. So he is a massive watch collector of modern, and as Jack's seeing, he's wanting to develop a collection of vintage watches. We're saying he's a massive collector. He actually said yesterday that he's wanting to do away with the newer products of Rolex, and he wants to now invest more in the vintage models, yeah. okay. which is, which is Quite mad, really, because this guy always had the latest Rolexes out, and we sold him two vintage models, and now all he asks us about is vintage models. As he used to, when Baselworld was on and the new releases come out, he was the first one on the phone to say, can he get us this, can he get us that? Not now. All he wants Jack is a vintage. Just, Jack just hands them over to me, and I just schmooze them and do me a little bit of, as I do. Uh, but I agree. Mid-range, um, 10 to 20 grand, sports, Rolex, sub, sea dweller, GMT, throw that in. But yeah, the holy grail of watch collecting is Daytona. Whether you're buying a semi-vintage Daytona, as in a um, Rolex movement, which you what, can get. Sorry to put it, what would you class as vintage though? Vintage well, is over 30 years. Yeah, so I'm a vintage. You could your, say that. You could your, say that. Your, you just turned vintage. So it's it's over thirty years as class as vintage, and then over hundred years as class as antique. So, good answer. Right then. So we've got Paulog Spinato. He says, "Will there ever be a date just in the thirty-eight or thirty-nine millimeter size?" Thirty-six is the epitome of right. classic. Yeah. Why mess with that? The forty-one has been such a success. If anything, I would say they might go a little larger on the steel, maybe okay. the 42. I'm not on about big movements, but it's an odd thing to have a in-between. So we're going to say no? I'm going to say no. I want to say yes. Okay. And what would you say? Do you think a 38 or a 39? I think they'll go 38. Okay. That's an interesting size. My opinion on this, on this one is that 
People wear larger watches. They did the 26, they did away with that, they made it a 28. That's interesting. So what maybe that could replace the 36? I don't think they'll replace the 36, but I just think ladies nowadays wear 36. My partner wears a Daytona. I just think the larger watches are getting more popular mm -hmm. and the smaller watches aren't. The fact for the older generation can't see the smaller watch. And I, just, I think Rolex might chuck it out there one day. All right. I beg to differ with your hand, though. <laughs> well, that's what we like to see, a difference of opinion. I like that. So we've got uh, Nicholas Bulker. He asks, what accounts for the RRP price difference between the US and EU? Now, I'm not sure if he just means that the US prices are listed without tax because there's different tax in different states or if there's something else. When I started, you know, when they had chalkboards at school, when I started collecting watches, there was massive price swings. You could go to the US and buy Rolex cheaper. You could go to the Far East and buy Rolex cheaper. They've amalgamated so that when you go to France, when you go to Dubai, when you go to the Far East, they're all supposed to be virtually the same. I don't think they are though. I think Europe's different to England. I've heard that it is actually slightly cheaper in the UK. It used to be. I don't know what it is now since the free what price What you've got to remember is it's all based on currency, currency fluctuations as well. So the difference in price may just be your, your change up of your right. currency. Okay, so the same guy, he also asks, how do brands like Omega, Longines and Gégère Lacoute justify the recent price increases? I like the Gégère, mine. Uh, because they've got to move with the times of inflation. The, the cost of everything's going up and the cost of manufacturing, the cost of living, mm -hmm. the cost of everything's gone up. I think the brand perception and the RRP are two separate things. So for instance, because people might, in their opinion, put Rolex above Omega, that doesn't mean that from Omega's point of view, Rolex are above Omega. So when well, the price goes up on sorry, Rolex, when the, they go when up on a, the other brands. When a, when a date just has gone up so much mm -hmm. and you look at a Seamaster, They've got to put the price up because this could be a major topic that we get response to. But the product, Omega, the, the, the brands are as good. Well, 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 this is the thing. Objectively, if you've got two watches very similar, it would, I think people would perceive it differently. Say a date just is eight grand and you've got an Aquaterra, which is kind of an equivalent for four grand. People will go, oh, well, the date just has got to be better because it's more expensive. But in reality... All in your, all in your head. It's, it's, all, yeah. it's all down to So perception. I think there's a bit of psychology and it's, perception in it's there. It's brand perception. So Charlie Purdy 01, he wants to know, what is the price prediction for the first new reference Oysterflex Daytona to hit the market. So if I ask you, like a current Oysterflex Daytona that trades quite a bit above list, say the uh, Pikachu yellow gold or the the most popular rose gold version, when the equivalent new reference comes out, do you think there's going to be it's much going, of a difference? It's not going to be a massive difference. It's going to be a slight difference. And when they start filling went through, there'll be no great difference at all, I don't think. I think initially 20 to 25%. Right, I've got a good one for you here. So Elliot Thomas, 88, wants to know, who among the team has the most watch knowledge? Who among the team has the most watch knowledge? <laughs> I don't think that's true. We... No, well, no, no. I'm no, going to blow smoke up the team's bum. No, there's only one answer to that. He's nearly 60 years of age. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm nearly 40 years of age. Well, I'm so closer obviously, to, I'm closer to he's 50 had more, than He's 60. had more time to study. And no knows more. Ask him to price a new Sky while a blue dial, he wouldn't have a clue. Ask him to price a new Movement Daytona, he wouldn't have a clue. But as for knowledge, hand up. Ha Pai Cho Chan says, best Rolex for 10K. For me, second hand, discontinued, black ceramic bezeled GMT. Oh. Around about the 10K. I like it, I like it. Jack? For me, the older Kermit with no papers, if we can find one for around 10K. Okay. He's really, he's really a, a closet vintage watch guy these days. <laughs> I have to now. I'm moving with the market, aren't I? <laughs> I like it. Right then, this, this one's a juicy one. So, Watch You Wearing wants to know, what are your thoughts on ADs selling pre-owned Rolex watches for more than retail price? What's it called? Watch You Wearing. Wearing no watch today for some reason. <laughs> I think what they've done is they've seen the grey market, they've seen brands like ourselves selling probably more watches than watches of Switzerland sell on a weekly basis when the hype was really in hype. I think they thought they could corner the market, 
but they haven't got the skills or haven't fetched the right people in that actually know the second hand market. The second hand market is totally different to the new market. Anybody can sell a new Rolex. And I don't think they've got the knowledges in the team. I know the transfer window is still open, so if <laughs> some local high retail on the corner down there in Newcastle might want to buy a head door or, or might sell them. I just don't think they've got the market right. I don't think they've got the knowledge within the team to value a watch mm -hmm. and then to, re, to reassess the price that it goes out to the customer at. Okay, so Kean Staley says, what would you recommend as a long-term investment? So what he's asking here, I think, is obviously it's all speculation with investments, but what would the criteria be if you had X amount to spend and you were thinking, okay, well, how do I identify a good watch? I always say to people, you've got to be careful with investment. You're buying a watch because you like it. If you've got the whereabouts to buy something, I would always go, being a watch collector, I would always go for something that I liked. We did a feature on the Daytona a couple of weeks ago that cost £153 in 1974. That watch isn't for sale. We've had loads of people ring up and say, how much is it? Is it for sale? It was purely the guy brought it in with his file. That watch is worth circa 60, 70,000 pound with its provenance. So that was a good investment, but that's a long-term investment. I mean, see for me, if I was to speculate, I would be looking for something with a relatively short production run, something that's full set, complete, and also has a lot of demand anyway. So I'd be looking at Rolex Sports, pre-ceramic, full set, and short production run. Yeah. Did he put a cap on that, a figure? Did he ask? No, he, did, he didn't put a figure. So it's just kind of the-, the, the white gold, is it Mon Monte Carlo, I think it is, is it? The yeah. Daytona with the red. Yeah. yeah. If you get one of them, that would be a great investment. Serious watch, serious watch. Mike's 88 wants to know, any price predictions for the chocolate sky dweller on Oyster Flex? That's the current one. We've seen these watches sell for, we've sold them for over £40,000 and they're now in the market for close out of 30, middle £30,000. Again, it's hard to predict, who knows what tomorrow brings, but it's a great watch. So if you like it, buy it, wear it, it's, it's one of them things we can't really predict. Where is it at currently? Is it an underlist piece at the moment? Yes. Because it's, it's, I'm guessing it's about 36k? Under Slightly underlist. Right. The trend in the market is kind of, it's come down a little bit and then it's kind of settled, hasn't Settled, it? Settled, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Lewis Holland123 wants to know, he says, I bought a 2023 Rolex Bluesy from the AD uh, earlier this year. Will it hold its value long term? Well, that, that question links into the question that's just being asked. I think you have to look at the history, no, don't you? No, like historically... No, I, I believe yes. For the simple reason, I think Rolex might increase the prices as they've done in the past, where that watch could be 15,000 or 16,000 from the AD. So if you've got one now for closer to 13,000 in a year or two's time, when the prices is 15 and 16,000 to buy new, your watch is going to be worth slightly more, if not exactly what you paid for it, but more, I would say more. Mr. Joe Russo wants to know, if you had to choose one AP, one Patek and one Rolex, what would you pick? I'll do one AP, which is my favourite AP of the moment. It's the top. So the offshore. Uh, the offshore. Forty-three um, mil top. Forty-three yeah. mil interchangeable strap, which is just a joy. I get the jobs of changing the straps on the older ones but, but, anyway. Yeah, but the newer ones are a lot easier, aren't yeah, they? They're just, just quick, quick release quick in out. and out. I want to do AP as well oh. first. The model is the black ceramic. We actually, just, I've seen the first one. Yesterday, no, not Monday yesterday, on Monday morning. Monday morning, standing outside the shop, a sports personality was standing talking to us and he had the black ceramic AP on with the gold indices. And that's the first thing that I noticed and I'd said to him, um, I, don't, I don't think we're going to mention his name, but he hits a little white ball about. And he, the first thing I noticed was the all black with the rose gold indices. I know the one now. Oh. It's when, when, when you're in the watch game, the first thing you do, it, it, it's a bit, not disrespectful, but anywhere you go, all you do is look at wrists. Yeah, yeah. And it was the first thing I did, was <laughs> look at the poor fella's wrist and the black ceramic with the, the gold. Beautiful, great, hey, good. Great, great watch. Good. And that's yeah. the first one I've seen. All right, so we need a Patek and a Rolex suggestion. Patek, I met a friend of mine at the weekend 
and it's a discontinued so um he had his 5711 blue dialed nautilus on still the epitome um but discontinued i think, I think the white dial and that's a cool watch uh, i really do like that dials, the, you know was always the ugly duckling for, for me i like the green dial 5711 green dial 5711 okay it's subtle if you know you know and i think over time that watch will go up but I, the question wasn't about price increases but i like the 5711 we've sold seven or eight of them over the years and it's just subtle it's nice you see blues you see whites but the the green's a nice watch and then the rolex the one? rolex i'm going to throw you a little curveball okay and again one of our customers that's become a really close friend came in the shop last week with a white gold meteorite fluted bezel day date and wow so well, for me i think you already know the answer <laughs> Platinum Daytona. And we'll have a cheap one coming in very soon. Is that baguette or plain? Plain. Okay, I like it. So Ben Lee 93 wants to know Starbucks versus Black Sub Date, which is a better choice? I thought you were going to say Starbucks for your Cafe Nero there. Well, that's another big question of debate. <laughs> well, topic of debate. We are Cafe Nero because we always, we always go local. So, and they are opposite. I'm so, glad that's clear. Um, uh, Sub date or Starbucks? <sighs> so a Starbucks. Well, the new Starbucks with the new green bezel. Yeah. It's slightly changed, hasn't it? Yeah. It's just like when I go to an Italian restaurant and I go, mmm, <laughs> bellissimo. <laughs> For me, the Starbucks or the Sub. It's got to be the Sub. They've never, they've changed slightly over the years, but it's been there. Like I know it's been there for a long time. So the stub for me. Okay, CQS Longin wants to know, are there any risks associated with selling watches on consignment? I would say that selling watches on consignment, we find our customers are quite happy to do it because we have either a relationship with them or we have total strangers that see our feedback, see what we're about. The hotter watches, John is the master. John prices watches for what they're worth today. We tend to sell the consignment stuff within 30 days. Yes, if it's an oddball watch, it's going yeah. to take a little bit longer. Another point on that, consignment only actually works if the customer understands what price point we're putting it out at. Because a consignment watch, for example, somebody could ring up, we do get it. Somebody could ring up and say, oh, my gold day date, I want 20 grand for it. That watch isn't worth 20 grand. 20,000 pounds, sorry. Customers will come on and say they want a lot more than the market value for the consignment. That that doesn't work. People would say, oh yeah, we'll take your watch. We'll try and return you 20,000. What we actually do is price your watch to sell. Consignment price still has to be priced competitively so that our model of consignment is still price your watch correctly for it to sell within the 30 days. So it all depends what way you look at consignment. Okay, right then. Kingy27 wants to know, do you offer online appraisals for secondhand watches bought from other stores? We're here to help. I think every individual's different. People ring us to buy a watch and they can find it cheaper elsewhere. Yeah. We actually tell, our, tell the customers who's called us, go and buy that watch. We can't supply you at that price, so. Yeah, I think ultimately, if you need to have it appraised after you've bought it from a second-hand dealer, I think you need to take a step back and the advice might be before you buy, make sure it's a reputable dealer. Yeah. And also, if it's the price is too good to be true and you're questioning it, then it probably is too good to be Definitely. true. Definitely. You know. Uh, for me, alarm bells ringing. Um, so, yeah. yeah, just be careful. Okay, um, Brennan White wants to know, uh, what watches are you guys typically able to sell the fastest and are you willing to offer sellers more and accept lower margins if you know it's a watch that's going to sell quickly? And, and he also asks, as a second part, do you ever buy watches with the intent not to sell them, as in just to hold them or have them in the shop just to attract attention? No, everything that comes through the door in the shop, we look to sell. We don't really, well, I don't really hold anything. I beg to differ with this fella with some of the freaky things he holds and um, but no everything talking that, about watches here yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah everything everything that comes in the store is for sale if I, if I rephrase it so say if somebody comes to you with a steel panda daytona that you know is going to be in and out would you be happy to accept uh, would you offer maybe more and, and know that you've got a smaller margin on that because you think it's going to be in and out quickly would i offer more i would offer more if i had a client for it yeah obviously if it was a pre-sold order 
But no, it wouldn't greatly, it wouldn't greatly change our model because our model's our model. And if we start doing that, it would just be so messy paperwork side of things and what's right and what's wrong to treat everybody the same. So, no. Okay. Nose Cone wants to know, he says, I've noticed a lot of precious metal Rolex models are selling under list now on the secondary market. Would you say that's the case currently? Also, I wonder whether you think Rolex should hold off on doing two price rises in a year, given the current financial situation worldwide. Some of their models are almost pricing themselves out of the market. I think they should do a price decrease. Yeah. Well, that would be nice. So, you, you watch the news every day and they're trying to curb inflation. From what I understand, to curb inflation is stop people spending money. Yeah, okay. Unfortunately, we've all got to eat. We've all got to feed ourselves. We've all got to clothe ourselves. We've all got to um, keep ourselves warm. Um, it's very, very difficult. The people that are in the luxury watch market, I don't think are affected by mortgage increases. But yeah, I think the precious metals are the watches that have been hit because they have gone up too much. So uh, the watch folk says, how well is the Rolex 128238, that's a 36 mil gold day date performing in the market? Always been a good watch. Yeah, older watches have crept up in price because of the price of the new watches. But one of the things that I was getting around to saying is, I feel it's a confident time to buy a watch. I am happy to sell friends, family, customers, the prices that we've got now. It 21, was... 22, I was a little bit scared. However, like yellow, yellow gold 36 mils direct from the AD has always been less than this price. Yeah, you can pick them up yes. under list on yes. the pre-owned market. Yeah. Um, right then, and the final one, Neil Wright wants to know, what sparked your interest in watches and is it a lucrative business? From a very early age, my father was into watches. I was a little bit obsessed with them. My mum always and still does because she's in the market. Uh, looks at a gentleman's wristwatch and looks at a gentleman's shoes. If your shoes aren't up to your wristwatch, you've got no chance with me mum. I feel that it's a lucrative market. It's a it was a market that we actually, we actually, I actually fell in really. We used to buy a lot of precious metal, along with precious, precious metal goes watches. And then so we fell into the watch market. We bought from, would it have been 2014? Two double sealed 5980s steels, I think it was 2014 or 2012, I need to check. We sold them anyway. 5980 steels for 27,000 euro each. And how much would they be today? Way over 100,000 pound. Oh, so yeah. we, we fell in the market, but we love what we do. So going to work every day isn't so much like going to work. It's, it's a great, it, it is a great market to be in, but it's tough. Don't get us wrong. It's not easy. It's not for the faint hearted. You've got to half know what you're doing up but it, it's a good market and on that note i would just like to say he who dares rodders he who dares wins <laughs> all right then thank you very much guys really appreciate the time guys if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this and we look forward to seeing you in the next one peace <laughs>